what is up guys welcome back to another GeekWatt video and today I'm taking you over this incredible $1,000 gaming PC build for 2018. This build really will smash the latest AAA titles at 1080 and 1440p high and ultra settings whilst hitting that key 60 FPS mark. You can be sure that with this build whatever games you throw at it you're not worried about having to compromise on settings to get a really enjoyable and playable gaming experience. It does all of this while looking superb with a black and red colour scheme with some good RGB options available too and in a form factor that isn't going to completely consume the whole of your office or your gaming room etc etc. Before we jump into the exact parts I selected and why, links for everything mentioned will be in the description below. Smash that like button and subscribe if you do enjoy today's video but let's take a look at the CPU. The AMD Ryzen 5 lineup is really where it's at uh, for builds at this budget in my opinion. You really hit the sweet spot. In particular, I went for the Ryzen 5 2600 chip. Uh, this sits on AMD's Ryzen Plus Ryzen 2 lineup, whatever you may want to call it, which is essentially an optimization of the initial and hugely successful uh, Ryzen release, which very much spearheaded AMD's resurgence as a major player in the CPU market. This chip boasts a faster 3.6 GHz base clock speed than its predecessor with single core turbo boost up to 4.25 GHz. It does this whilst retaining the great 6 cores and 12 threads we've come to know and love for superb multi-threaded performance. In essence, what this basically means is that games that prefer one or two faster cores get that with good clock speeds and newer titles which are optimised uh, to use more threads on a CPU uh, also get a big win here with 12 total threads available to use. It does this whilst including a fantastic uh, RGB stock cooler that you can see behind me, a low TDP and an affordable price point. But up-to-date links for up-to-date pricing will be in the description below for a range of regions and retailers. For the motherboard, I selected the MSI Mortar B350M, but what exactly does that all mean? B350 is the chipset that the motherboard uses. Unlike Intel, where you have to buy the top-end, really expensive, uh, highest chipset motherboards in order to get access to overclocking, AMD have really brought it down to a more affordable level. This motherboard also sits on the M80X form factor, which makes it smaller than full-size ATX motherboards without compromising on functionality. This allows it to be priced more competitively and also take up much less room in a system and allow us to keep the build as compact as possible. Even if you don't want to overclock, the B350 chipset has a plethora of other advantages. Those advantages include four RAM DIMM slots on this motherboard for superb upgradability and future proofing, an M.2 slot for super fast storage drives and USB-C on the rear panel, giving you all the latest tech on this affordable motherboard. For the memory in this build for the RAM, it was a pretty easy choice to be honest. Two 8GB DIMMs of Corsair's Vengeance LPX gives us 16GB of total memory and is going to perform very well indeed. DDR4 memory has got more expensive over recent years and doesn't seem to be showing any signs of slowing down in terms of its price point. Uh, going for two DIMMs here gives us dual channel uh, optimised memory, meaning we get a bit more performance. We're talking little percentages and it also looks a bit more symmetrical. You do this whilst retaining uh, still two RAM DIMM slots empty. So if you wanted, you could buy an identical kit again, drop that in the spare slots to give you 32 gigabytes of total usable RAM. Corsair are a really reputable manufacturer, good customer service. I've had a great uh, track record with this memory in my personal build and the fast 2666 MHz clock speed is going to ensure uh, that we're not got any memory bottlenecks, so to speak. For the storage here, I selected a 2TB Seagate Barracuda hard drive. 2000GB of storage is more than enough for your movies, music, games, Steam library, Origin library, uh, all that good stuff, and the 7200RPM speed is as fast as your mainstream consumer hard drives tend to get. I really would have loved to have added an SSD in this build, uh, for fast, uh, for a fast Windows drive, quicker uh, boot up times, but it just wasn't possible, especially given price volatility and the RAM and GPU components of any build nowadays. Great upgrade later down the line, but isn't going to improve gaming performance in the short term at least. For the graphics card in this build, I selected the MSI NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 6GB. 
and breathe. Uh, now this GTX 1060 is one of my favourites. It's got MSI Superb Twin Frozen Cooler on with two nice large fans that are going to keep the unit nice and cool. Comes factory overclocked and with it being the 6GB derivative of the GTX 1060 family will give you some uh, considerably better performance than the more uh, than the more inexpensive 3GB models. Graphics card pricing has been all over the place uh, in recent months or even years now because of cryptocurrency mining. However, we are starting to see the tail end of that. GPUs are coming down drastically in price, which makes now a good time uh, to build your next gaming PC. But links for everything with up-to-date pricing will be in the description below. For the penultimate part in today's build for the case, I selected the Cooler Master Q300P. It's got four of these really nice sort of carrying handles slash feet, which provide good airflow and movability and looks superb. I actually reviewed this case a couple of weeks back and you can see that video in the card section here. It's got good options in terms of airflow with two 120mm fans included up front, which are RGB, and one in the rear as well, which is really, really nice to see. It's got a fairly basic interior design, but with a good front I.O. that gives us USB 3, power, reset, and audio jacks, and does everything we need at a decent price point. Another big bonus is that it isn't too big. It's quite a small, compact uh, case. I think people make the mistake of building huge, massive gaming PCs when it just isn't necessary. This is a really ideal choice. Now though for the final part in this build which is the power supply. It's another Cooler Master affair here with the Cooler Master Master Watch 650. It's one of the cheapest power supplies I've found to have fully black sleeved cables, has an 80 plus bronze certification and comes from an incredibly reputable manufacturer. 650 watts is a tad overkill uh, but you aren't really spending too much more money than a low watt unit and does give you leverage for some upgrades later on down the line. Overall really pleased with this unit. It's a perfect fit for today's build. And that I think just about wraps it up. If you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss another juicy Geekawa upload. Never described my videos as juicy before and don't plan to again. Enjoy the end montage, hit me up on all the socials and as always I'll see you in the next Geekawa video. Maybe we can be something